Hey everyone, welcome back. We have another Automa today. This time it's for the Whatnot Cabinet. This is a very relaxing game about collecting different whatnots and placing them into your cabinet, hoping to have the best cabinet at the end of three rounds. The solo mode that comes in the box is Beat Your High Score, which is perfect for those that like it, um, but this just gives another alter alternate way to play. Um, so this turns it from a beat your high score into a win-loss condition. So when you go to BGG and look in the file section, you're going to see a PDF. Um, I do not have a low ink version for this because this one doesn't take a lot of ink. So you're going to get a rules in the PDF as well as a couple of pieces of paper. Uh, one is going to be the Automas. Her name is Beatrix. Her player board, this is her cabinet. And there's going to be some solo play setup reminders down here, a solo gameplay reminder down here, and the game end and scoring down here so that you don't have to constantly look back at the rule book. Although there isn't a lot to it, so you might once you read it the first time, you might be good to go. You will also get four top pieces to her cabinet. I went ahead and printed them and then double-sided and laminated them. You don't have to do that. You can just simply print them off on paper if you wanted to. But you can have four, and this will add replayability as there's different combinations. So at the beginning of the game, you're going to want to go ahead and select one of these. You can do it at random, or you can just pick one. And you're going to place it on this top row. Okay? And then you're going to take the bottom section of her cabinet, and there's four of those as well. And you're going to pick one. You can see there's letters on the bottom right-hand side. Of them, there's A, a B side, a C side, and a D side. So you can pick one. I'm just going to go ahead and pick A. And you're going to place this on her board, and that's going to be her bottom section. You're going to set up like you would a normal two player game. You're going to have five curiosity cards, one wonder card. You're also going to add the automas, you're going to pick a color for the automa, and you're going to place them on the 1 and 3 slot, and then your colors are going to go on the 2 and 4 slot just to start the game. You're also going to shuffle the AI deck, which this comes with the game for the Beat Your High Score mode, and I thought, well, why don't we just go ahead and utilize it, because it's very well done. So you're going to go ahead and shuffle those, and you're going to place them next to the board. You're going to have your cabinet as usual. You're going to have four tiles out here none of them can be special to start the game and then you'll have your token supply and then you're ready to start before i go into gameplay you can play this on normal or hard and the setup is the same for both it's just the end of game scoring is a little different which we'll cover at the end of the game when it is beatrix's turn we are going to flip over the top card of her deck she will try to move to this spot so this is spot one two three four and five she will move to one if it's open. Let's say I had already gone on a previous turn, and so she wanted to go to one, and it's already blocked. You will use these arrows to go to the next available spot. So she will simply go to the two spot. And you will also wrap around. Let's say this was, she wanted to go to five, and this said go to five, and it's already blocked. Then the next one over, she'll just wrap around the board to go over there. But in this case, she's going first, so all of them are open. So she will move to one. She will discard all special tiles currently showing, but there are none. After she does that, we will draw two tiles from this bag, one at a time, and we're gonna place them on her player board. So in this example, the first tile we drew for her was a red bottle. So looking up here, this tile can either go in the column that has the color, so in the red column, or it can go in the column that has the shape. So in this particular uh, instance, it can only go in one of these three spots. I'm going to pick the one that doesn't have any special text. These, this, these texts represent actions that she's going to take, and they're bad. And they're going to give her an advantage. So I'm going to go down here. You don't have to start at the top. You can start anywhere on the column. And let's say I pulled another red one. I don't have to go the next. I can go to any open uh, spot. We'll go ahead and draw another tile. So this one says it's a yellow bottle. So this one can either go here, here, or here. Or it can go in one of these two slots. Because bottles can go into one of those spots on that column. So I will go ahead and place it here. 
and that is her two tiles. If there are any tiles that in the outdoors that were missing, you would go ahead and refill now. All right, so then let's say it's my turn. I go, I don't know, here. Let's just say I took two tiles, place them on my curio, and then I go ahead and refill. All right, it goes back to Beatrix's turn, so we'll flip over another card. She wants position four if it's available. She always ignores this. She never takes this action. So position four, it is available. She's going to discard all purple objects. There are none, but if there had been, we would discard them from the game. And then once again, she's gonna draw two tiles. For the first one, we draw a purple shell. So this is purple and it's a shell, so this can only go in this column. So let's place it here as to not give her any actions additional actions and then we have to draw one more oh she drew a special special tiles when she draws them are treated as wild so this is going to help you a little bit you can place these anywhere ignoring all restrictions she doesn't take this action but i will say the ones that have one point at on on them will score just like they will in a, in a normal multiplayer game so she'll score a point for this tile but you have the advantage of you can place it anywhere. So let's say I place it there. So let's go over some of the actions of what happens if you place a tile on a spot that has words. Well, this one says Beatrix gains a wonder card from the supply. At the end of the game, each player is going to score based off how many crystals they have in their cabinet. Well, if you placed your tile on that one spot, she is going to gain a secret one that only she is going to score at the end of the game. Let's say we place the tile over this one. Then after that, she immediately draws another tile and places it on the board. Here, you will just simply take a three point token from the supply and you will add it to her player area. She will score those at the end of the game. And this one says Beatrix gains the highest val value curiosity card still available left to right. So here we have a two point, two point, and two point. And since it said left to right, she will grab this one. If this is what was still available and then she, and then you placed a tile on that um, spot, then she will take this one since it's at the highest value furthest on the left. Let's say that for one of her tiles she drew during her turn, it was this one that's a yellow uh, animal. Well, looking at here on her board, this can only go on this column since it's a yellow and an animal. If it is already filled, she will simply discard the tile and you will not replace, you will not draw a replacement for it. So this is a good thing for you. The bad thing is that you filled up a column and at the end of the game, she is going to score for completed columns in rows, but she will not have the opportunity to place this on her board. But in this example, if she had pulled this one, she can't place this in the yellow column, but she can place this in the shell column right here. So you would have to place it. It's only if there are no legal options to place this based off this placement above that she discards these. Once everyone has gone for the round, then you will simply move everyone back up. You will wipe the outdoors and you will refill and then you will proceed to round two of three. Beatrix will always go when it's her turn based off where her pawn is on the landscape board. Let's say that this is what her player board looked like at the end of the game. Well, if you're playing on normal, uh, Beatrix is going to score four points per completed row and two points for completed columns. So in this instance, she would score four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten points from her cabinet. You're then going to add up any points she has gathered through actions from placing tiles onto the board and saying, hey, she gains a point token. If she has gained any curiosity points, you will also add those as well as any special action tiles that have victory points on them. So in this case, she would score an additional one point. Then you would score for any wonder cards. She would score for the community wonder card as well as any private wonder cards if she's gathered them. She also scores for crowns on her tiles on her player board. And lastly, she scores at the end of the game if she has a pawn on a landscape action that has victory points. So that's the first three. In this case, she would score three points. 
At the end of the game, whoever has the most points wins. If you tie, then Beatrix wins. You have to beat her. If you're playing on hard, each completed row is worth six points, and each completed column is worth three points. So four and two on normal, six and three on hard. If you still find this too easy, then add five points to their score to make it an expert. And if you're finding it too um, hard, you can subtract five points from their score to make it an easy score. And with that, you now know how to play the whatnot cabinet against the Automa Beatrix. So I hope you find the difficulty that fits your play style. Next up, I'm doing an update to my Hadrian's Wall Automa, as well as creating a second opponent to play against. So you should have lots of solo options for Hadrian's Wall. After that, thanks to some generous contributions from the solo community, I will be working on some Automas for Azul and Tiny Towns. Look in the description of this video to check out all my Automas. I have ones for Parks and Century Spy Series, Canvas, Sagrada, Splendor, and people really seem to enjoy them. So if you're looking to maybe play a game that doesn't have a solo mode or the solo mode only has beat your high score, then feel free to check out my Automas on the geek list in the description below. With that, good luck and happy gaming.